I praise and thank God for this beautiful evening time that God has given us to come together with you all and to spend some precious moments studying God's word. Let's close our eyes and bow our head and let's pray. Father, we praise you and thank you for this beautiful opportunity that you have given us to come once again in your blessed presence and come before your precious word. Father, as we look at the life of David, as he is fleeing from Jerusalem, Lord, we pray today's session is a blessing for all of us. Speak to us. Reveal us your will, your purpose, and your ways. May your name be glorified. In Jesus' most holy name we pray. Amen. I thank God for this opportunity that God is giving us to study God's word, looking at the life of David every week, little by little. And I believe the Lord is helping all of us to learn the greater truths, the deeper truths. There's so much to learn from the precious word. And may the Lord help us as we dig deeper into the word and know God's ways. For a meditation, let's turn to 2 Samuel chapter 15, verse 31. That's where we stopped last time. 2 Samuel chapter 15, verse 31. And one told David, saying, Ahithophel is among the conspirators with Absalom. And David said, O Lord, I pray thee, turn the counsel of Ahithophel into foolishness. This is where we stopped the last time. And here we see how David is in the presence of the Lord and his sincere prayers. So let's continue further. Verse 32. And it came to pass that when David was come to the top of the mount, where he worshipped God, behold, Hushai, the archite, came to meet him with his coat torn and earth upon his head. And to whom David said, If thou passest on with me, then thou shalt be a burden unto me. But if thou return to the city and say unto Absalom, I will be thy servant, O king, as I have been thy father's servant to this time, so will I now also be thy servant. Then mayest thou for me defeat the counsel of Ahithophel. And hast thou not there with thee Sadok and Abiathar the priest? Therefore it shall be that whatsoever thing thou shalt bear, hear out of the king's house, thou shalt tell it to Sadok and Abiathar the priest. Behold, they have there with them their two sons, Ahimaaz, Sadok's son, and Jonathan Abiathar's son. And by them ye shall send unto me everything that ye can hear. So Hushai, David's friend, came unto the city, into the city, and Absalom came into Jerusalem. So here, slowly, slowly, as we look at the developments, David crosses Brook Kidron. And here, climbing Mount Olivet, barren feet, head covered, and then he reaches the top of the mount. And there we see Hushai, the archite, comes to meet David. So let's take a moment and look at the developments. A person is coming and David knows him. He is coming to meet David. What's the lesson for us to learn here? Remember, as children of God, we have committed our life into God's hands. What does it mean by committing? Now, He is the Lord. And He is in charge of our life. He created us. He is my Savior. And I accepted Him as Lord. And through water baptism, I have put on Christ. So, this is the basic principle. There is a Lord in my life who is in charge of my life. Many a times we think that I am in charge. That's how the world lives. But for a child of God, there is someone who happens to be the Lord. He is in charge. So when he is in charge, as a child of God, when anything happens in my life, I have to just come into his presence. 
and seek his will know his will because it's the lord who allows things to happen in our life the circumstances keep on changing there are so many things so as a child of god we look unto the lord so here david he prayed and and now hushai comes into before david but now look at the the shortcoming of the weakness of david the spirit of god is revealing the the spotlight is now moving at the shortcoming of david see the spirit of god is showing someone's weakness not hiding it showing it to us so that i have to learn important lessons there and david on one side he turned to god and he prayed that confidence in god that trust in god yes but on the other hand the spirit of god shows yes you turned to me you prayed but on the same time at the same time you trust your own understanding also you trust yourself also on one hand you say lord there are things that are out of your control you turn to me but th- but at the same time you trust your own understanding that's what is revealed here look at what david is telling hushai if thou passes on with me then thou shall be a burden unto me but if thou return to the city so can you see the the mind of david clicking that's how that's the same with us many a times we too we we trust god but at the same time we trust our understanding also so here we see as david is has reached the top of the mount he worshiped god yes he worshiped god he is going uh, into the enemy's territory later on we'll see how shimei comes and curses him now from here he'll be crossing jordan and then from jordan he'll be going on to mahanaim and uh, that's where the battle will be fought and from there he'll be returning so now he's on his way going towards jordan and once he crosses jordan he's crossed israel he's so he is in one way going out of israel and now look at him turning towards his own understanding so here for that let's turn to proverbs 27 verse 19 proverbs 27 verse 19 as in water face answer to face so the heart of man to man again i'll read proverbs 27 19 as in water face answer to face so the heart of man to man now what does that mean now look at david talking to hushai on one hand he is calling on the lord next he is worried he is planning and he tells hushai that there are two sons of uh, of zadok and abiatar what all happens there in the palace just let me know why are you worried david can't you just trust dear friend can you hear the voice of the lord when you have committed your life into his hands then why are you scheming why are you planning isn't god watching over it psalms 37 verse 5 and 7 Psalms 37, verse five and seven. Commit thy way unto the Lord; trust also in Him, and He shall bring it to pass. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for Him, who prospereth in His way, because 
uh, rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. So, take a moment. Hear the counsel of the Lord. And the Lord clearly speaks to us, commit thy way unto the Lord. Doesn't the Lord know what's Absalom and Ahithophel planning? You be at ease. And that's the Lord telling us, let's not trust the flesh that's in us. Let leave it in the hands of God. And he is faithful. He will do everything for his glory. Next, let's move on to 2 Samuel chapter 16, verse 1 onwards. And when David was a little past the top of the hill, little past the top of the hill. First we saw he reached the top, he worshipped. Little past the top of, behold, Seba, the servant of Mephibosheth, met him with a couple of asses, saddled and upon them two hundred loaves of bread and an hundred bunches of raisins and an hundred of summer fruits and a skin of wine. So next, now after Hushai, next person who comes across David is Seba. The Spirit of God clearly mentions a little past the top of the hill. What does that mean? As we go in our Christian life, step by step, the enemy is watching over us, waiting for an opportunity to bring in the temptation. Yes, the Lord is there with us. We trust him. We love him. But that doesn't mean that there won't be any temptations coming across in our life. Now, here after Hushai, the next person who comes is Seba. Do you remember Seba? He is the servant of Mephibosheth. So Mephibosheth is being treated royally in the palace of David. But Seba has his grudges. He has his grudges. And he was waiting for an opportunity. And look at how smart he is taking advantage of the opportunity that has come. And David is fleeing. He comes with a couple of asses saddled and upon them 200 loaves of bread. Remember, later on we'll be looking at that incident. Mephibosheth, who was lame, had in fact told Seba, to prepare an ass so that he can also flee with David from Jerusalem. Mephibosheth did not want to stay in Jerusalem. But the servant Seba deceived him. Second Samuel chapter 19, you can see it. See Mephibosheth approaching David and telling him the whole fact. Seba deceived him. Instead of taking the master, he goes on his own. And as he goes, he takes bread and raisins and fruits and wine. And the king said unto Seba, What meanest thou by these? And Seba said, The asses are for the king's household to ride on, and the bread and summer fruit for the young men to eat, and the wine that such as are faint in the wilderness may drink. And the king said, And where is thy master's son? And Seba said unto the king, Behold, he abideth at Jerusalem. For he said, Today shall the house of Israel restore to me the kingdom of my father. Then said the king to Seba, Behold, thine are all that pertain unto Mephibosheth. And Seba said, I humbly beseech thee that I may find grace in thy sight, my lord, O king. So, Seba taking advantage brings all those things for the king. And look at the mistake that David did. He gets carried away, looking at all those things that are placed before him. The asses are there, bread is there, raisins are there, fruits, wine. And David 
easily believes what this cunning servant is doing. How easy it is for the enemy to deceive us, dear young friend. How easily we can be deceived. He is not telling the truth, Seba. But do you realize the hurt that David has in his heart from that moment onwards till he comes back? 2 Samuel 19, if you read, Mephibosheth. On the other hand, 2 Samuel chapter 19. 19, and there we read, verse 24, And Mephibosheth said, The son of Saul came down to meet the king. He had neither dressed his feet, nor trimmed his beard, nor washed his clothes. From the day the king departed until the day he came again in peace. Mephibosheth, is mourning the departure of the king. While Seba, look at the picture he creates before David. That's a lesson for all of us. Let us not trust our flesh, our understanding. We think we are smart. We think we know everything. But do you realize, dear young friend, how easy it is for the enemy to deceive us. So many lives have been destroyed. And you can't blame anyone. It's squarely my mistake. I got carried away. Now what do I do? Look at how he says, uh, how David, he says, all that pertains unto Mephibosheth is yours. This is the reason he has come all this way. He had that grudge against Seba, uh, against Mephibosheth. And now as he goes, how proud, how, how, how wise, he thinks he's wise. He, has, <clears throat> he got what he wanted. And David from that day, till he comes back, when he meets Mephibosheth, the story is something else. So there's a lesson for us to learn. Don't just hear one part of the story. The story has two parts. You need to hear both the sides. So many people's lives have been destroyed. We have to go through so much pain because we misunderstood people. I hope you understand misunderstanding people who in fact loved us so much. How much they will be grieved. How much they will be grieved when they come to realize that they love you so much and you have misunderstood them. I hope the Spirit of God is speaking to each one of us. God expect, expects us to grow to maturity. Learn from the mistakes of others. That's why the Spirit of God has written down all these things. And David now, he says, okay, you take the share. And you know, when David returned back to Jerusalem, Seba had taken sides with the enemy. This man who had come with all of this, had taken sides with the enemy while Mephibosheth was mourning. May the Spirit of God help us to learn this lesson. Turn to John chapter 7, verse 24. John chapter 7, verse 24. Judge not according to the appearance but judge righteous judgment. Because appearance will deceive. So many have been deceived. We have to be very careful. Satan, we all know how Satan brings his temptations in our lives. 1 Corinthians chapter 
2 verse 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 15. But he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. Again I'll read. He, but he that is spiritual judgeth all things. Dear friends, this world is full of temptations. There are people trying to deceive us. And how careful we have to be to judge things. If I am spiritually weak, that means if I am not having that right relationship with God, that trust on God, I will depend. Look at David. He prayed. He worshipped. And then he leans on his flesh. Same way we pray, we worship, we read the Bible and we trust our own understanding. And we end up being deceived. Look at how we judge others. The scripture clearly says, A spiritual man judgeth all things. So may the Lord help us in these days to grow spiritually. As we grow spiritually, we, Holy Spirit God is there to help us, the comforter, the advocate, the one who will lead us into all truths, is there to help us to discern whether that's a temptation, whether that's a trick of the enemy, or is it God's will? I still remember an incident, it happened a few years back, the Indian Army was sent to Sri Lanka to fight against the uh, LTTE. And this is an incident that happened. The Indian troops, as they were advancing, the LTTE was known, in those days, was known as the most fearsome guerrilla group in the world. An Indian army lost the peacekeeping mission in Sri Lanka and had to return. They were defeated badly because LTT, they, they have been in that guerrilla warfare for a long time. They deceived. There was a time when, as the Indian troops were advancing, they hacked into the signaling system of the troops. And they started giving commands to the Indian troops. And the Indian troops were thinking that it was their officers who were giving them the orders to move. But the fact was the enemy had hacked the signaling system. And the Indian troops walked into a trap. And were virtually those, none of those soldiers escaped. They were killed brutally. Same way, dear young friend. We are in a spiritual warfare. The enemy is there on the lookout to deceive. That's what temptation is all about. Look at Seba, how he comes, the way he talks, the gifts he has brought. Young friend, isn't the world tempting us? We need to be spiritual so that we are able to judge. That's why the scripture says a spiritual, that he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. So we need to be spiritual, we need to pray and discern God's will. Then only will we be able to lead a victorious life. 2 Corinthians 2.11 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Again, lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. So, we are going to pray now. We, had, we saw two incidents. Number one, Hushai. David trusting his intelligence, his understanding, his confidence on his flesh and how he is doing things. God allows it for, so that we can learn our lessons. 
how many of us really believe that he is the lord he is in charge he knows what he is doing and all that happens in our life there is a reason behind it so as we study the scriptures how deep it is next after hushai as david goes a little forward seba coming with all those gifts david falls into the trap and years late and and after some time not years after a few days he meets mephibosheth and how sorry david might be feeling man i i was thinking something else about you later on we'll be looking at mephibosheth coming before david and humbling himself and david tells him david told ziba take take all and ziba was so thankful but when mephibosheth comes david tells him you and and he is testing mephibosheth he says you divide half the properties mephibosheth says let him take everything i'm not interested in anything for me the greatest thing is you have come back that's how much mephibosheth loved david let's close our eyes and let's pray the lessons that the spirit of god is teaching us the carnal man is there inside us as a youngster we think that we know everything when our elders when our parents people who are senior to us when they try to tell us something we think that don't tell us i know i know when parents try try to counsel us we we are upset don't tell me i know young friend what do you know you know nothing you're going to know many things by the time your hair will turn white or your hair will be gone like mine life is not a joke and the spirit of god is counseling us we need to be spiritual what do you mean by spiritual trust god dwell in him let him be the lord of the life the spirit of god is there to lead us and to guide us the enemy is always there watching for an opportunity may the lord strengthen us let's pray father we praise you and thank you thank you for helping us to learn from the life of david serious lessons lord we pray today's session may be a blessing for all of us and not a reason for judgment so many lives have been destroyed father help us to lean on you and may your name be glorified in jesus most holy name we pray amen oh may the love of god the father grace of son jesus christ and the communion of the holy spirit be with each and every one of us till the coming of the lord amen and may god bless each one of us and help us to walk the way that he shows us remember the enemy is always on the lookout to take advantage let's be spiritual let's not lean on our understanding our father is faithful may god bless you maranatha